Okay, this is lesson 10 and represents um, our final of the traits and skills used in counseling for this module. It's last because I would consider it to be the most advanced. It's advanced in two ways. It takes the most amount of skill and experience by the counselor and it also takes the most amount of relationship. You might not ever get to doing this with a person because you might have very small amounts of interaction and that might not afford you the opportunity to use it. So confrontation is a word that many people automatically associate with negative feelings or with, um, with arguing and fighting. But it's not the same as conflict. When we're confronting something, we're literally with the front of that thing. That's what con means with and the front. So we're putting things sort of face to face or in, in each other's presence. And this means that we must have relationship with people so that they know that we're doing this in a non-threatening way. And not only must we establish a strong relationship with people or rapport if you prefer, but we must actually maintain that as we go through this process. So the language that we use, the think time that we give to people, and the fact that we might have to address this conversation more than once or accept that people aren't going to be perfectly insightful at answering, these are all really valuable things. So when do we use it? Well, we, we use it, um, some people would say we use it when we're calling people on their stuff. I don't like that way of doing it because it's very judgmental. I think we assume when we use language like that, that somehow we are able to tell people's stuff or that we don't have our own stuff. And a much better way, I think, of describing it is when you see people doing things that don't fit with what they say, or if you see people saying things that don't match each other. So a couple of examples. For example, we used one way back in a few lessons back when somebody said, I feel fine. Well, there's a clear discrepancy in the words that they're using and in, the, and in the tone of their voice. So that discord or discrepancy would need to be explored. That's what we mean by confrontation. Or another example is somebody saying, I'm committed to being in this course and then somebody not ever submitting their work on time. That would be an example of something I would explore. Or a person saying, I really, really care about being respectful of other people, and yet that person constantly shows up late to our meetings. Those are three examples of discordance, and we'll give you others later on. More so than in a normal con concreteness situation, our ability to be tentative and to be in the moment are both critical here. To use uh, uh, what I would call a tone that is genuinely curious, that you're inviting people to explain or explore something and understanding they may not be prepared to do that in that moment or have all the answers. However, we're going to ask them in the moment. So we literally have to be very present and notice things. We have to say, hang on a second, you know, homie the homunculus says, hang on a second, Mike just said that he's trying to cut out carbs and yet he just poured a bunch of sugar into his coffee. Or hang on a second, you know, Kevin says he has a lot of respect for his wife, but he keeps calling her the old lady in our marital counseling session. Things like that should stand out to us and we should take a moment in our head to kind of think about the best way to explore them. But we want to make sure we explore them now. As a typical rule, when we leave things until later, they don't work very well. People won't remember them or they'll kind of feel like you are ganging up on them or stacking up the evidence like you're a prosecutor. So being really present in that moment is important. Sometimes you kind of realize later on, oh, I should have explored that. But don't worry about it. If you miss it one time and it was important, it's very likely to come up again. So per give yourself permission to not be perfect. Um, again, we're going to use open-ended questions here. And in our third part of the process, that open-ended question becomes very important. And it's really often going to sound like, can you help me to understand that? Or help me to square that circle is an expression I use. It's probably a bit outdated now. But I, I, I want people to help me make sense of it is another one that I use. Once again, I've scooched forward the examples, but they are in your package. So here's an example. Diane, you've talked about wanting to be a psychologist, but I've also heard you say that you can't wait to be done with school. For me, those two things are hard to understand together. Please tell me how they fit together for you. So there is a bit of a challenge here and you can see why we need relationship because there's a but there. And even if I took the but out, it's still going to sound 
like a bit of a confrontation. So here's how that might sound. Diane, you've talked about wanting to be a psychologist, period. I've also heard you say that you can't wait to be done with school. So I can do it completely without the but. For me is a substitute for I statement. So it's the same thing. I have a hard time understanding how those two things fit together would be a variation. And in this case, it's a statement. Please tell me how they fit together for you. And one of the most important things at the end of that is to be quiet, to totally be silent and just let that sink in for a moment. Don't rescue the person from standing, spending some time. Sometimes you get people who'll sit there and they'll just blink. And I've been in conversations that I sat there like that for 90 seconds or two minutes, which is an incredibly long time with just kind of a welcoming, friendly look in my face. And if I ever needed to speak, I would say something that implied to the person or indicated to the person I'm waiting for them to answer. So I might say, um, I might meta-communicate. So I'm just quietly waiting for you to give me some kind of response or I'm just giving you time to digest and I'm hoping you'll have some answers for me. Don't take people off the hook by saying things like, well, it sounds like you don't have an answer for me right now or um, is it this or um, telling people, see, it doesn't work, does it? Uh, let them work that out themselves because if they don't live it, then they don't get the value out of it. And confrontation is one of the most valuable things that will come out of a counseling session. It's incredibly powerful when it happens and happens well. So that silence after step three is really important. Get the other person to respond. Next, another example, Jean, earlier you described your dad as a burnout, but I've also heard you talking about smoking pot. And again, we might take the word but out. And then we say, number two, I'm a bit confused by those two remarks. Number three, can you help me to understand what you think about drugs? And so we're going to, again, be quiet and let the person do that. So the reading on this is really good, and it gets you to kind of work through some examples. It gets you to take a look at some that may not be good and might lead to conflict. So take a look at the reading and really think about how you as a person in a role play, if you're playing the role of a client and you're getting to exercise five, how you can present people with behavioral or verbal discrepancies that they might confront, that they might have a chance to explore. Okay, thanks and good luck.